G'day guys, my name is CJ. The Steam Deck is finally coming to Australia, and as a result, there's gonna be a ton of Aussies like me rushing out to finally grab their hands on one of these bad boys. And of course, one of the very first mods anyone will do to their Steam Deck is probably a storage upgrade. So today, with the help of Crucial, we're gonna show you how to upgrade your Steam Deck's SSD. Let's get started. For me, being a tech nerd means that Again, I've already gone and bought a grey market Steam Deck. I've got the OLED model with 512 gigs of base storage. And whilst it'll be absolutely fine for the average punter, when you consider it has micro SD storage as well, I'm also a sucker for performance though, and I need that blistering SSD speed for all of my games. And you wouldn't be a true gamer if you don't already own a ton of games accumulated over the years from different promos or sales where you convince yourself that one day you'll actually end up playing them. And finally, with the Steam Deck, with it being so portable, you've got the best chance of doing so in years because you can take it anywhere and game at any time. But portability also means taking it out with you and you're not always gonna have a reliable internet connection. So I want maximal space to store as many games as possible so they can run at the best speeds it possibly can. So one of the best ways to do it is to upgrade the stock SSD with one that has more capacity. And Crucial have partnered with me on this video and sent me their P310 2230 SSD with a whopping two terabytes of storage, which is gonna be absolutely perfect for my upgrade journey. Now, if you've never seen 2230 SSDs before, they are absolutely tiny and an absolute necessity given the portability of the Steam Deck. So before we get started with upgrading the SSD, there are a couple of small housekeeping things you need to do first. It's recommended that you discharge the battery to 25% to minimize any risk if you accidentally damage the battery. But if you're careful, it should be okay but you have been warned. Then you have to turn the Steam Deck off, obviously, and make sure you take out the micro SD card if you've already installed one, because if you leave that inside the Steam Deck and you crack it open, I can guarantee you that micro SD card is toast. So once you've taken the micro SD card out, I'd also recommend going into the BIOS and turn on battery storage mode. And what this does is render the battery in an idle state so you won't accidentally turn on the Steam Deck even if you accidentally touch the power button during the procedure. So to turn this on, you hold the volume up button and then tap the power button when the Steam Deck is off and you'll hear a sound confirming this combination, after which release the buttons and it'll boot into the BIOS. Then here you can go into setup utility, navigate to power and select battery storage. Hit yes and the Steam Deck will power down into battery storage mode. And from here, the Steam Deck won't wake up again until you plug it back into power. So let's get to cracking it open. It's also recommended that you use the included case to rest the Steam Deck upside down on because you're gonna have to remove a whole bunch of screws on the back first. And this is one easy way to prevent there from being any damage to the device. Now, if you own an OLED switch, you actually need a T6 Torx bit, but if you own a standard LCD deck, a small Phillips head will do just fine. Now just make sure you remember where screws go where because the central four screws are marginally longer than the outer four screws. So store them safety like I had on a magnetic pad I've got here from iFixit. They didn't sponsor this video. And then once you've removed the screws, grab a thin pry tool like a guitar pick. Honestly, you'll need quite a thin one. And I'd start along one of the trigger buttons. If it's the first time you're opening the Steam Deck, it might be quite stiff, but be calm be steady and just slowly drag the pick along the line until you hear a gradual click as you go. And then eventually, once you've gone all the way around, that rear shell just simply pops loose and you can place it to one side. And that's the internal structure of the Steam Deck. It's pretty compact in there. Now, the first thing you wanna do now is disconnect the battery. Now, down here in the middle, there's a little pull tab that's attached to the connector that connects the battery to the motherboard. It is quite stiff. So what I like to do was grip it as firmly as close to the base of the tab and then just move it side to side to gradually loosen it and then eventually it'll disconnect. Once that's done, the next thing to do is flip up this retaining tab on this CF cable. I used a plastic spudger and a set of tweezers or forceps to grip the ribbon cables pull tab. This was a little bit finicky, but it's not the end of the world. So just take your time, don't force things because these little cables are quite fragile. Once that's removed, there's two more torque screws that are holding the motherboard cover on. And once that's done, the cover can be flipped or removed. 
If you want to remove the cover completely, you'll also have to detach the ribbon cable from before off the cover. And that is a little bit of a task and you might need a heat gun to just soften up the adhesive. For me, I couldn't be bothered. So all I did was very carefully lift the cover up and flip it, making sure that the ribbon cable wasn't getting bent too much. Now, once flipped over or removed, you can see that little stock SSD sitting there pretty with a little EMF shield on top. You'll also have to remove a torque screw holding it down and the SSD will spring up straight away. After which, go ahead and just remove the SSD. Now, most of you will probably just go ahead and switch them around, but I'd actually recommend first grabbing this little EMF shield first as we're gonna use it a little bit later. At this point, you grab the new SSD here. Again, we've got the crucial P310 in two terabytes and get it ready for install. Honestly, I still can't get over how small they are. Now, one of the perks of having opened up the device I mean, you can actually customize everything else whilst you're already here, so long as your imagination takes you there. Now, given the small size and the amount of work it'll have to do, I decided to try to improve thermals given that's going to be a major roadblock for Steam Deck users and their experience. So what I did was purchase a cheap copper heatsink off Amazon that I could use with this SSD. This one came with some thermal pads and I recycled this little EMF shield just to ensure that there's no funny signals resulting from this change. It ends up being quite a tight squeeze, but it still screws on perfectly well. And then once you're happy and it's all installed, you first have to replug the battery because it's easier done when the motherboard cover is off. Then it's just a matter of going backwards with directions from here on. And just before we close it back, given we've got the cover off already, I use this as an opportunity to customize the rear plate to have a few extra vents to maximize cooling and in theory, performance. Everything clicks back into place, screws are back on, and we're ready to wake up the battery by connecting the power plug into the USB port you'll know it's ready to be booted when the top LED power light flashes on and then remains on. Now, before we can start gaming, we actually need to reinstall SteamOS that runs on Proton. And the way we do this is by setting up a bootable USB. Now, I'm not going to run through this bit in the video because it depends on whether or not you own a Mac or a Windows machine, but Valve have directions on how to do this online, regardless of which system you have. And I'll be sure to put the link in the description below, so check it out. But overall, it's really not that difficult. You just need to make sure you either got a USB-C ready USB, or you've got a dongle that you can use to plug a USB into. Now I've got this USB ready to go, having used it with my Mac. And all you do is plug it in and turn it on. And once it loads, you can specify a drive to boot from, and it will load up a basic version of Proton, after which you should be able to see the USB drive ready to restore. And I mean be patient, because during this process, the screen can occasionally go black or flip between loading and booting screens, and it could feel like the install is hanging or crashing. But more times than not, it's absolutely fine, and even if your nerves get the better of you, you can still reboot it and try again. And once it finishes, you can remove the USB drive and continue the final prompts before SteamOS is ready to go again. And thanks to the Steam Deck rocking this blazing fast SSD, a lot of these wait times aren't even that long. Then from there, it's just like starting a brand new Steam Deck up again with all these setup options. And once you've gone into settings and confirmed that indeed rocks up to two terabytes now, you can start your install frenzy. Again, for a lot of people, having a micro SD is probably just enough, but for me, I'm a maximalist, I'm a tech geek, and I need as much space as possible and to have the maximum performance where possible as well. And honestly, it could just be placebo, but having this new SSD has really made loading games, even if they aren't native to SteamOS, look and perform like brand new. It probably is placebo if I'm being honest. But if you're in the market for an excellent two terabyte SSD that's really easy to handle and install, feel free to check out Crucial's P310 2230 SSDs. I've been using it solidly for the last couple of weeks and it's still performing like an absolute champ. Link will be in the description below combined with a promo code if you wanna get a slight discount on your next purchase. But overall, whilst Valve doesn't explicitly tell us that opening the Steam Deck won't end up voiding the warranty, I exercise some caution here rather than taking the word of some dude on the internet. But if you're happy with the potential risk that warranty will be voided, then installing an SSD is really super simple and a safe way to future-proof your device. But that's about it. It couldn't have taken any longer than 20 to 30 minutes to go from absolute start to finish. And in terms of modern devices, 
It's one of the most repair friendly devices I've seen for a long time. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope it's been helpful. And again, be sure to check out all the links in the description if you need help during any part of this install or if you're just interested in some of the parts that I used in this video. As always, subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw, ding the bell icon so you don't miss out. And of course, stay safe out there and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy modding, cheers.